I expected a lot more from the Logitech Combo Touch. After seeing a lot of positive videos around this iPad keyboard case, I thought this would be a great cheaper alternative to the Apple Magic Keyboard case. But after extensive testing, it is cheap for a reason. Don't get me wrong, the Apple Magic Keyboard case is far from perfect, but I do believe it is more versatile for on-the-go use. The Apple Magic Keyboard is simple. You attach your iPad via the magnets on the case and it snaps into place. The level of engineering and sophistication to this design is evident and makes the Magic Keyboard quick and easy to use. And when you compare this design to the Logitech Combo Touch, it's kind of incomparable because how easy is that? I can now go use my iPad super lightweight with no restrictions, then I can just snap it back into place if I need to go write an email. In my personal opinion, I think the Logitech Combo Touch is trying to be a little bit of everything and mastering absolutely nothing. You've got your keyboard, you then got a kickstand so you can prop it up and use it like a laptop or watch Netflix with it. You can put it all the way back and use it in sketch mode so you can do drawing on it. You can also remove the keyboard just like that. That's how you're meant to remove the keyboard. And then you have it in sort of a handheld thing so you can just like write on it and do iPad style stuff. But all of it just feels cumbersome. The exterior design is beautiful on the Logitech Combo touch. It has a hard fabric with a nice minimalistic modern look. It does not mark as easily as the rubber texture on the Magic Keyboard, which is very susceptible to fingerprints and skin oils. Good luck if you choose to buy the white case. Let's discuss the adjustability available on both of the cases. Now, although the Apple Magic Keyboard case has the least amount of adjustability, it is technically the more usable case for one particular reason that I want to talk about in just a minute. Now, in terms of the positionings available on this Apple case, that's literally it. That's as far back as it goes and it just provides you with a little bit of tilt and there's nothing beyond that point. Now the problem is when you remove your iPad, it does become naked and there's no protection. So if you put it on your desk to use your Apple Pencil, it could potentially get scratched. Now there is a solution from a third party case by a brand called Pitaka that still allows you to use your Apple Magic Keyboard case but provides protection to the rear. And I will leave a link in the description down below to that case as I think it's pretty cool. So you do get a lot more adjustability with the Logitech Combo Touch. You can attach your iPad and you can recline it way further back to give yourself quite an aggressive angle for working out. If that's something you prefer, you can place it in a very similar angle to the Apple Magic Keyboard. And you can also flip the keyboard around and attach it at the rear and then you can flip it like this and hold your iPad in handheld mode without having to touch your keyboard and, and all that type of stuff. This does add a lot of weight to the iPad though. Right now, this is extremely heavy. So if I was doing a lot of handheld work, this would become very fatiguing very quickly. Another thing you can do while the keyboard is in this inverted mode is use it as an anchor point when you use the case as a folio style case. So you pull out your hinge and you place it like that and it acts as a stopper so it doesn't slide anywhere. In my personal opinion, this is really pointless because you're going to be watching Netflix probably in this mode. So you're not going to be hammering on the screen like crazy. So you may as well just detach the keyboard, throw it to one side and just place your iPad on your table because it's way quicker and easier. Now, as cool as all of these modes are, they're kind of irrelevant because the Logitech Combo Touch is pretty awful at achieving what it's designed to do, which is act as a laptop keyboard. Because this whole hinge design takes up so much space, you've got this ridiculous keyboard section and then this pointless hinge, you can't physically fit the Logitech Combo Touch onto your knee. So if you're working on the train or while you're traveling around on public transport, you will not be able to work with your keyboard. Whereas with the Apple Magic Keyboard case, the space it takes up closed is the exact same amount of space it takes up on your knee when it's open and using it with the keyboard. In terms of the performance of the trackpads, both of the cases are perfectly fine. You'll already be able to tell that there is a significant size difference between the Logitech Combo Touch and the Apple Magic Keyboard case. Now, there weren't too many huge advantages to having a huge trackpad other than just triggering the shortcuts. You know when you're sort of switching between your apps and closing apps and doing all those shortcut com swipe commands on the touchpad? Those were slightly easy to do on the Logitech Combo Touch. However, I did find you had to travel a more significant distance in order to move the cursor the same amount as on the Apple Magic Keyboard smaller trackpad. When you're going from like left to right, this trackpad is way more sensitive compared to the Logitech Combo Touch. However, you can change this obviously within the settings to get a comparable experience. But straight out of the box, that's just how it felt. For the very first time that's great to see on this Logitech case is we now have a touch anywhere trackpad. So you can click anywhere on the trackpad now and it will register that click. Whereas on the old version of this case from previous generations, you could only click at the bottom like an old-fashioned laptop from 2010. That being said, I do still prefer the click of the Apple Magic Keyboard. There's something about it that has just a bit more definition to the click and also it just feels way more solid. Whereas on the Logitech Combo Touch, if you look at this corner here, when you're clicking on the trackpad, there's a significant amount of motion to it and it just feels 
a little bit spongy and loose. For the typing experience, to my surprise, the Logitech Combo Touch was almost identical to the Apple Magic Keyboard case. In the past, when I've had Logitech cases or other third-party cases for my iPad, the keyboard's always been the area of disappointment compared to an official Apple product. An area I did notice a minor difference between the two cases was the typing sensation. The Logitech Combo Touch has a softer feeling to the overall key press. And I'm going to put this down to the flex in the base of the case. And when you press on a key, you will see this flex translate as pressure is applied to that key press, which gives a more springy sensation to the typing because obviously the keyboard is kind of moving up and down. Whereas on the Apple Magic keyboard case, there's no flex at all in this case. It's so well built. So this gives you a solid foundation for the keybed. So when you're pounding away, typing your emails and essays, just feels way more responsive and clicky compared to the Logitech Combo Touch. A huge feature on the Logitech Combo Touch are the function keys. This gives you a very familiar laptop experience so you can adjust the brightness of your iPad, change the volume, mute it. You've got your media play buttons, rewind, fast forward. You can affect the backlight on the keyboard. You've got spotlights, so you can do a quick search. And you also have, you know, like lock buttons and home buttons so you can return to the home page. Now, something that I do find annoying about this function bar is this lock button in particular. Now, when you're typing away really quickly and you maybe make a mistake and you reach for the backspace button more times than you may expect, I always ended up clicking this button right here, which would lock me straight out of my iPad and it would always break your flow while you're working. The lack of the function buttons on the Apple Magic Keyboard case is not a deal breaker because being really honest, they're kind of pointless. Other than the fact you have great easy access to the screen brightness and volume, which is very annoying to access inside of the control panel to adjust manually, the rest of the buttons are a complete waste of time. To access Spotlight, you can click that button or you can just pull down on your trackpad to do the exact same thing. And also, you don't need a screen lock button because on the Apple Magic Keyboard case, I never use this on and off button because whether the case is open, the iPad is on, and when the case is closed, the iPad switches itself off anyways, and then as soon as you open the case, it turns itself on. So you don't need to lock the screen and unlock the screen with a button because the iPad's intelligent enough to do that itself. A feature that I was first excited about on the Logitech Combo Touch was this sketch mode, which allows you to place your iPad in a more ergonomic position to make it more comfortable for writing and doodling, drawing things with your Apple Pencil. But the problem is, the more time I spent with this feature, the more pointless it became. Because as you apply pressure to your iPad, it bounces up and down because the hinge is just weak and it keeps moving. So as you're drawing, you have a very inaccurate basis because it's constantly moving. So it means you can't develop any form of muscle memory or at reference point of accuracy because your iPad is constantly changing depending on how much pressure is currently being applied. And it doesn't even require that much pressure. I'm just tapping the screen right now and you can see it's bouncing up and down. The next problem with this as well, after you drawing Procreate for an hour or two, you know, you've had an, ex an extensive session, the iPad with it bouncing up and down means it slides around the desk to just add to the extra point of frustration where the iPad's constantly moving underneath your pencil. Overall, I think both of these cases are high quality cases, but the Logitech Combo Touch just simply isn't worth its 220 pounds retail price. I think it's way too high for what you're buying. And the extra $100 for the Apple Magic Keyboard case, I do think is worth it for its more refined experience in day-to-day -day life. If you want to learn more about iPad Pro cases and which may be best for you, check out this video over here where I test the best-selling cases available on Amazon.